gentlemen i oh we'll just kick the camera then i am here i'm doing a facebook live on silver birch twigs this morning now what prompted me to do this live was i was sorting out some flowers for the children's flower club at school and one of the bunches of roses had these silver birch twigs inside and i really really love silver birch twigs they are just so um well flexible for want of a better word hee <laughs> hee um you can use them for so many things now these twigs are a little bit brittle they're starting to die off um and what I, the favorite thing i would do with a silver birch twig is in the autumn time i would start to make that into a, a door wreath now i can't do this because the length there isn't hasn't got sufficient length and also because the twigs are quite dry they're not going to hold but you could imagine if I was to tuck that in that it would be the beginning of a door wreath and they're really really easy to make and I love the fact that we can have door rings on our doors as welcomes to our friends and family and it doesn't have to be just something for Christmas you could pick up these twigs on a walk and make your own door wreath now my top tip for you is to make sure you spot where silver birch trees are in your neighbourhood. So these are the trees that are medium sized, small to medium sized, and they have the distinctive white papery trunks. So I suggest that after a storm, a windy, windy storm, that you go out and you pick these branches because they fall off the tree really, really easily and then um, take them home and store them or use them so what i would do as well because these are really lovely in a vase that you could just have them on mass and put them in a vase or if you were feeling really really creative for the winter time you could spray the um twigs and you'll see that in the springtime in the supermarket sometimes you'll have these sprayed yellow and put in with bunches and all sorts of colors and you've probably seen already in the supermarkets for well, my local sainsbury's has already got its christmas bling next to the flower store and it's got you know twigs that is sprayed white and silver and gold you it's quite difficult actually to spray um a silver birch twig because the twigs are so fine but i did see a video on youtube years and years ago when the lady picked her silver birch twigs she lay a sheet out in her garden put the twigs on the sheet and then got a you know a roller um paintbrush and she painted her twigs like that. So she guess she painted that side first then turned them over and painted the other side. So if you're thinking of going into painted twig production, that is the way to go. Now, um, on the subject of flower club, we haven't got loads of flowers this week. And in fact, the roses I was given are probably the only decent flowers that I've got this week. So I thought that I might use my silver birch twigs as an inspiration. And I have got, because I love twigs so much, I've got this huge bundle of twigs that are rattling into view as I speak um, and we're going to make mobiles at Flower Club this afternoon so don't tell the children don't spoil the surprise so what I'm going to do is get one of my twigs so again it's quite woody it's obvious to say um, it's quite stiff and I can't break that and I probably picked these twigs last November late November last year and I've had them stored out in outside but under cover um, from my door wreath waking workshop so I do think that you know a twig isn't just for Christmas it's for the whole year too so I'm going to use my silver birch twig as the basis for a little mobile a hanging mobile and I'm going to add to that decorate it with a, I've got some hydrangea from the garden which is starting to dry and die off and some rosemary so it's lovely and aromatic and then oh I keep knocking that camera and then if I lean backwards I forgot to get my rose so we've got these roses for um flower club this afternoon and what I've chosen is I've specifically chosen materials that are going to survive out of water so the rose will dry the hydrangeas are drying and the rosemary will dry so it's a little arrangement to make um sort of bridging that gap between how absolutely fresh materials and them and them dying so i'm not using um i've got pittosporum in the garden i was going to take to flag club i'm not using that today because it's just going to go from fresh to dead so the idea here was that i would go from fresh to dry to dead 
to, um, to keep the life of the flowers going. So added to this, I'm going to, well, I'll prepare my materials first, that I'm going to cut the rose down quite short and get rid of the stem. Now, I would keep the rose stems as well for another project. So um, you can keep absolutely everything and reuse it. It just depends how cluttered you want to become at home, how much storage space you've got. So I've taken the leaves off that and I will set that to one side and I will use that for something another day. So I've got my rose cut short. I'm going to trim my rosemary. Just taking the sprigs off the main stem. And always when I cut, I always start cutting on the lower stems. So it just means that when I come to that bushy bit, I can either come back to that later or if I decide I don't need it, I can just put the bushy bit in a vase. And if I cut from this end first, I just end up with a stubby bit of greenery. And then with my hydrangea, I'll come in from the underside and cut a few segments of that off. And I can cut that down again like that. So I've got those materials ready. And then with my favourite bit of kit really is this paper covered wire so if you've not seen this before I will post a link into the group later <laughs> just looking at what Betty's saying I'm watching with the sound off as I'm somewhere else I shouldn't be watching oh Betty I do that all the time and also when I watch other YouTube videos I, lot, I watch lots of them that are um, Polish you know foreign languages to me and um, I watch quite a lot of um, videos with the sound down so hello Betty um, I should wave, shouldn't I? Hello, Betty. Thank you for joining me. So I'm cutting a piece of this binder wire off. It's one of my favourite materials to use. So it's a practical piece of string, basically, but it's got wire inside it, so it holds its shape, and it's really easy to use. And you don't have to fiddle around with tie knots and things like that. So what I'm going to do is start at one end. So I'm going to wrap that on the end of the twig and then come round and twist. And this is the beauty of this wire you don't need to tighten the knot you just twist it and it holds and then because I like working the other way around oops I'll move that down to there and with my bits of rosemary I'm going to start to bind them on so I've, I've, what I've done there was taken off the needles at the bottom because I want to bind onto the straight stem if you bind on over those twigs as they dry they shrink and your, loose, your fixings will become loose and you'll find that all the greenery slides off the end of your little stick. So I'm going to come through and just really tautly wrap over like that. And then I'm going to add in the hydrangea. So I'm going to, just going to cut away the bits that have died. So I want to enjoy that hydrangea as it dries. And I'm where I've got this binding here, I put the bit of hydrangea over the top and hold it in my hand and bind again. So I'm not over binding, it's just you know perhaps you know one or two trimmings over, and you decide how long you want your bits of greenery to be. So again I lie that over there, it just softens the look of the of the hydrangea. And I'm making this, I'm just putting everything on the top edge of the stick so at the back it will just be flat and you'll just see these little coils of um, coils of string going across and then with my rose now my rose is quite heavy so what I'm going to do is I'm not haven't put it right on the edge I'm putting it more towards the center of my stick because I don't want it to when I hang it up do it all to fall down to one side and again the same thing that and pulling this really really securely because this stem is fresh you know there was every chance it was the heaviest piece of material here and the fresh stem that the flower will just slip away so I am being really secure with that and then to cover up this last bit of stem there that isn't massively attractive I'm going to put in the last bits of rosemary and I'll finish off with a much finer, sort of tapering off. In fact, I think I need a few more pieces of the rosemary just to cover up the bulk of the rose stem. And then as I finish, I'm going to finish it with a really tight binding. 
So that's all secure, but I've now got these two little stems sitting here. So I'm going to cut one really short and one a tiny bit longer, just so they blend a bit more into the stem. And you could go over and secure them all the way down to cover them up and go all the way along the stem, but I want to show off my bit of stem here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little loop there, thread my end in, because I want to show off the workings. I'm quite happy. I've worked, I've done it quite neatly, so I don't mind if anybody sees that. And then with this end, I cut it off. In theory, that's got a bit of, I say, a wire end, so it's quite sharp. So I just turn that over, just so it doesn't scratch me or the wall or the door where I'm going to place it. And that would be the base of your of your mobile. It's almost like it's um, you know, a, a buttonhole or something like that. So that's the base of your mobile. And then with a piece of string, uh, you would tie on a piece of string. So you could just tie an old knot, but I learned how to do a clove hitch at guides. And this is how I like tying it on. You make a loop and you make a loop. Put one loop behind the other. And you slide the stem in there. Hold that steady. You do the same on the other side. A loop, a loop, one loop behind the other and hide that under there and pull it tight. So again, I've chosen this um, baker, is it baker's string or butcher's string? One or the other, because it's decorative. So it's ha having that purpose of tying up. I might have to tie a knot on the top there because that's falling a little bit loose. But it's all part of the decorative process that you're using something functionally because it needs to hang. And, um, but it's got a decorative purpose as well. And that would be your finished little um, hanging mobile. And as I say, you just need to watch the weight to make sure. You can see I'm moving that rose up a bit because I can see as I take in my hand, it's rolling forwards. So I'll need to adjust that. Probably what I need to do when I hang it on the wall is actually move the knots around so it sort of balances correctly. But you can fiddle with that to your heart's delight when you've made your own little hanging dory. So I hope you've enjoyed that. And I shall see you another time.